From the Evening Standard in London, this is The Leader. Hi, I'm David Marsland. London is doing a lot of cocaine. A report by King's College claims every day, not just weekends, an average of half a million doses are being taken in the city. The market's worth a billion pounds a year, they say. Who's taking it? This seems to be a classic illustration of the middle-class dinner party syndrome. It's described today really as London's favourite Class A drug. Our health editor, Ross Lydell, explores the consequences of the drug trade. Later. Uh, a terrible accident occurred. Uh, the person driving the car, they know who it was, and they have that on camera. Uh, a young man was killed. Donald Trump's rejected the UK's calls for a fugitive diplomat's wife to be stripped of immunity and sent back here. Also... I just feel like it's time that we stood up and said, we're not going to take this anymore. We are ginger and we're going to fight. Um, OK. Um, slightly awkward. When Harry met Ed, the prince and the pop star unite for World Mental Health Day. Taken from the Evening Standard's editorial column, this is The Leader. We'll have extracts, but you can read the whole thing in the paper or go to standard.co.uk slash comment and you'll find it there. In a moment, Ross Lydell's with me to discuss the underground drug trade. Some quite incredible figures on London's cocaine use dropped this morning. 23 kilograms of the drug are taken every day. That's more than Barcelona, Amsterdam and Berlin combined. Here's what the Evening Standard thinks. At Sir John Stone's Museum, a new exhibition of William Hogarth's paintings on the rotten morality of Georgian London has just opened. It includes his famous image of an addicted city, Gin Lane. Today's Hogarth would be painting a different picture of London's dark side, Cocaine Alley. Research by scientists at King's College London shows that more than half a million doses of the drug are consumed in London every day. There is no simple answer. Not legalisation, not more resources for policing, not just education. Although a society in which smoking can cease to be mainstream is one that could surely decide to rid itself of cocaine. Maybe we need a new Hogarth to show us as we really are. Well, I'm joined by our health editor, Ross Lydell. Ross, these are stunning figures. How do they know what they are? Well, hopefully people who are listening to this are not in the middle of the dinner. But the way the researchers at King's College did this was to analyse the sewage water supply in London and in other cities across Europe. And essentially they looked at 75 European cities and they were able to find in this wastewater derivatives of cocaine. Massive amounts, like genuinely massive amounts are being taken, not just at weekends, but every single day. By who? Well, this seems to be a classic illustration of the middle class dinner party syndrome that both Cressida Dick, the Met Commissioner, and Sadiq Khan, the Mayor of London, have talked about for the past year or two. This seems to be, it's almost become, uh, it's described today really as London's favourite Class A drug. And uh, yeah, it's been taken by probably people you know, I know. Certainly the other day one of my best friends was talking about his night out. Without naming him, he talked about how he went to the Old Vic with his girlfriend, went to see the play about Litvinenko, went for dinner and then they went home and had a line. So it is commonplace in London. It certainly seems so. The figures extrapolated from what King's College found suggest there's more than 500,000 lines or wraps of cocaine being consumed every day. So Londoners don't seem to be concerned about the legal aspect of it, but what about the health aspect? Well, last month the Office for National Statistics published its annual breakdown on drug deaths, essentially drug, drug overdoses, and it found that pretty much one in seven of these were linked to cocaine. You know, the most deaths are caused by heroin and methadone overdoses, but it's quite alarming, really, that 637 deaths were caused by cocaine last year. How does it get here? Well, it seems to get here from South America, from Central America, in shipments. So we assume it's coming in, and the big uh, ships come in through Tilbury. 
But what the National Crime Agency has shown, and this has been revealed within the Sky News documentary today, is that it's being hidden in bananas and pineapples quite ingeniously. And when you see these supplies, you wouldn't think it's there. And the police officers have to crack open the pineapples and in the middle they find giant lumps of cocaine. Are people just in this city just not afraid of the law? They're not, there's, a not consi- there's no consideration that they might be caught doing this? Well, the most recent figures from City Hall show that in the past year there have been about 1,000 authorizations for the Met to uh, conduct sort of investigations into drug use, but that's pretty small. If you think there's 500,000 people a night using cocaine, there's very little chance of getting caught. Obviously, you know, police resources are thin and they'll target dealers rather than users. And outside of London, there are consequences outside of the city, aren't there? Well, according to Sadiq Khan, this is a classic illustration of the county line sort of drug networks in action, where essentially you have young children, teenagers criminalised by gangs and used as drug runners to export drugs to provincial towns and cities. There was a study from City Hall last month that estimated 4,000 London teenagers are caught up in the whole county lines network and they're used to take drugs to places in in Norfolk. Norwich is a big area, to Portsmouth, to Brighton and so on. You know, as many listeners will have seen, if they watch Netflix, they'll have seen Top Boy and this dramatises exactly what's going on. And speaking last week to people in the Mayor's Violent Reduction Unit, they admit really that Top Boy is painfully close to the truth. They do say that sadly it doesn't show uh, the positive impact as well of some of the Mayor's programmes in terms of trying to help people, but the reality of the sort of the life that some of these kids are leading is is pretty well displayed. Next. Let down by both governments. We've got no answers. The mother of a British teenager killed in a hit and run says she's disgusted by Donald Trump's defence of a US diplomat's wife suspected of being involved. With the women accused of being involved in the hit-and-run death of their son Harry, shielded by diplomatic immunity, the Dunn family pinned their hopes on Donald Trump. The president, though, appears to have dismissed any chance of Anne Sekoulis being handed over to UK police. From the Evening Standards audio news team, here's Lisa Mannering. So a young man was killed. The person that was driving the automobile has diplomatic immunity. The US president speaking at the White House in the tragic case of Harry Dunn, a British teenager killed in a head-on collision involving American Anne Sekoulis, who is married to a US diplomat and thus has diplomatic immunity. Police have said that CCTV of the crash which killed the teenager shows the Volvo travelling on the wrong side of the road. Diplomatic immunity is an international agreement which exempts diplomats and their families from prosecution. But Prime Minister Boris Johnson says in this case he wants it waived. I do not think that it can be right to use the process of diplomatic immunity for this type of of purpose and I hope that... uh, and Sekoulas will come back and will uh, engage properly with the processes of laws they're carried out in this country. And that's a, a point that we've raised uh, or are raising today uh, with the, uh, the American uh, ambassador here in, in the UK. And uh, I hope it will be resolved uh, very shortly. And uh, you know, to, to anticipate a, a question that you might want to raise, uh, if we can't resolve it, then of course I will be raising it myself personally with the White House. Well, he did raise it with Donald Trump, and last night at the White House briefing, Trump appeared to defend Anne Sekoulis. You know, you have two wonderful parents that lost their son, and the woman was driving on the wrong side of the road. And, and that can happen. You know, those are the opposite roads. That happens. I won't say it ever happened to me, but it did. When you get used to driving on our system, and then you're all of a sudden in the other system where you're driving, it happens. You have to be careful. Very careful. At the same conference, a photographer caught a shot of the president's notes, which said the spouse of the US government employee will not return to the United Kingdom. Despite telling police she'd stay in the UK, Sekoulis fled shortly after the crash with her family back to the United States. Harry's family, Tim Dunn and Charlotte Charles, are now at the heart of a widening international diplomatic dispute to get justice for their 19-year-old son and an apology. I feel now she's had six weeks to come forward to apologise. And 
I'm not really feeling that that is enough anymore. As a human, again, and as a parent, I would have apologised straight away. And I think we've been really lenient. And really dignified up until now. But I'm just really disappointed, upset. Yesterday, they met with Britain's Foreign Secretary, Dominic Raab, in the hope he'd urge the US to waive Mrs Sekoulis' diplomatic immunity. I don't want to say anything too horrible, but I, I wasn't impressed today. I felt extremely let down by the government today, or by the Foreign Commonwealth Office. And I am deeply, deeply disappointed that they think it's OK to kill a young lad on his bike and then they could just walk away. I'm so disappointed with today. Harry's family have vowed to travel to the United States to ensure she faces justice. Their lawyer, Rad Sager, says they're in talks to launch a civil case against Mrs Akulis to get justice for Harry, but he hopes it won't come to that. Anything is possible, and if, if meeting with President Trump would help us get a step closer, again, to seek justice for Harry, to get justice for that boy who died that night needlessly, the most one, one of the most wonderful kids in our community. If that's what it takes, then, you know, I'll, I'll, listen, I'll extend an invitation now to President Trump directly. S meet us. We will, we, you know, let's, 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 let's have a chat. You get the chance to meet these people and let's have a talk. Nobody wants to litigate or fight. Here's the Evening Standard's opinion. Even by the low standard of Donald Trump's often crass, cruel remarks, these words sting. He doesn't care or Britain isn't important enough for him to do anything about it. But the parents of Harry Dunn aren't going to give up. They say they will fly to the US and are considering launching a civil law case. The US president should think again and let Mr Kulis face justice. You can hear more from the audio news team with our morning bulletin sent to smart speakers at 7am. Just ask for the news from the Evening Standard. Now. we excited today. I'm going to go and... Uh... A film a thing with Prince Harry. He contacted me about doing a uh, charity video with him. Hey mate, hang in. So nice thanks you. very much for, for coming in, I really appreciate it. Appreciate yeah, thanks for having me man, this is something I'm quite passionate about. Oh, uh, you as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Two of the world's most famous gingers, that's their words, not mine, are teaming up to make a video for World Mental Health Day. Prince Harry and Ed Sheeran's short film was released on social media this morning. This, for me, is, 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 a, is a subject of a conversation that's just not talked about enough. I think people all over the world are really suffering. Someone with your skill set to be able to write lyrics and of a song to, to raise awareness, I think, would be amazing. Yeah, I, I mean, that's exactly what I'm trying to do. I just be, People just don't understand that it's life people ask. Yeah, you know? I mean, what? Here's what the standard thinks of it. It's World Mental Health Day, a moment to recognise an issue that's been ignored for too long and joke about it too, in support of the cause. Well, you know, like with the jokes yeah. and the snide comments, and, you know, I just feel like it's time that we stood up and said, you know, we're, we're not going to take this anymore. We are ginger, and we're going to fight. Um, OK. Um, slightly awkward. Um, this might be maybe a miscommunication, but this, this is about World Mental Health Day. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. Yeah, no, I knew that, no, no, I definitely knew that, yeah, definitely knew that. So we're good? Yeah. All good. Prince Harry and Ed Sheeran have teamed up to make a video encouraging people to reach out, make sure that your friends or strangers look out for anybody who might be suffering in silence. We're all in this together. And they are not just talking about their ginger hair. That's The Leader, taken from the Evening Standard's editorial column. It's our opinion, but we want yours. Get in touch and continue the conversation through social media. Use the hashtag The Leader Podcast. We're back at four tomorrow. Subscribe to make sure you get it early. Thank you.